This program is brought to you by the partners and friends of Creflo Dollar Ministries. Coming up next on Changing Your World. Being at the right place at the right time is not limited to where you are physically. It's not limited to your physical position. You may say, well, Pastor Taffy, you know, we're in quarantine. I'm sheltering in place. But God's not limited by a pandemic. God's not limited by sheltering in place. All you want to do is shelter under the mighty hand of God. Trinidad and Tobago. The 2021 Virtual Change Experience is coming to your home. If you'll just trust Him and believe Him that there's a will of God for your life, there's something I'm supposed to do, and I will not miss it this year. Register now by logging on to creflodollarministries.org. John chapter 4, and this was the woman who was at the well. I'm telling you, it's time for us to have an encounter with Jesus at the well. It's time for us to meet Jesus at this time and at this season. And at this place, and consequently, our lives will be turned upside down. So when we look here in John chapter 4, it was so hot in Jerusalem that most would go to work early in the morning and take a long break during the middle of the day when it was the hottest. And then they would return to work later in the evening when it was cooler. And since the Samaritans were those who were despised by people, thank God Jesus didn't despise the Samaritans, but Jesus was intentional about including them, about bringing them in, ministering to women, ministering to the Samaritans, going out of his way on an assignment so that he could remove burdens, and he could destroy yokes. It was out of his compassion, the Bible says, that he um, extended his journey and went to a place where normally people would not go. But you know what? I believe it was all because it was time for a divine encounter. So this woman went to the well to draw water during the middle of the day when she did not expect to run into anyone. But you know who she ran into? She ran into Jesus. It is a normal sea of our lives. It may be, you know, where we're just kind of doing the errands or running or going through the motions. And so it was when she had no idea who would await her at the well. And as a result of her going to the well, she ran into Jesus because Jesus knew that she would be there. She went for water, but he gave her living water so she would never thirst again. I'm telling you, you can go through your life and you think that, hey, I'm just going through the routine. I'm just showing up for work. I'm just showing up and just serving. I'm just, you know, changing um, the, um, I'm just teaching in the classroom. I'm just, you know, doing whatever the mundane tasks are, the routine tasks. But all of a sudden, Jesus meets you there. Jesus has 
an appointment with you. He has carved heaven's agenda and made it a point to connect with you at that very hour. And when he came to the well and when he talked with her, he recognized that he would change her life. And so he has conversation here with her at Jacob's well in verse 6. Um, it was about the sixth hour. There comes a woman of Samaria to draw water. Jesus says to her, give me drink. Then the woman in verse 9, skip there. The Samaritan woman said to him, how is it that you being a Jew ask me, a Samaritan of a woman, for a drink? For the Jews have nothing to do with the Samaritans. Jesus answered her, if you had only known and had recognized God's gift and who this is that is saying to you, give me drink, you would ask him instead. And he would have given you living water. I'm telling you, she had a come to Jesus meeting. Jesus got her all together. And so it is when we have these divine encounters, he jacked her up and changed her tire, read her mail about how she was, you know, on the fifth marriage and on the fifth relationship and all the things. But you know what? It was so that her life would never be the same again. Her life would never be the same again. You think about Saul and how Saul was on that road of Damascus. He had persecuted Christians. He had dragged them out of their homes. He had killed them, murdered many of them. He was on his plan and his plot to do damage to the Christian church and to the people of God and to the believers of God. But you know what? In Acts, God shined a light, and that light hit Saul right in the square of his face and said, Saul, why are you persecuting me? And that light caused Saul to be transformed from the inside out. And his life was never the same because he was at the right place and he was at the right time. And you know what? He was delivered and he was set free. Now let's look back at John chapter 4. You skip down with the woman here at the well and, and uh, as she gets this living water and Jesus uh, talks to her about her five husbands here in verse 18, and, and uh, he skip on down, and verse 22, it says, uh, you Samaritans do not know what you are worshiping. You worship with uh, what you do not comprehend. We do know what we are worshiping. We worship with what knowledge of God that we have. Now, skip further down here, and we're just going to look at how she encountered Jesus in verse 27. Just then his disciples came, and they wondered, were surprised, astonished to find him talking with a woman, a married woman. However, not one of them asked him, what are you inquiring about, or what do you want? Or why do you speak with her? This was the longest conversation that it, Jesus is believed to have had with any individual. It was with the woman at the well, which was believed to be 45 minutes. Then the woman left her water jar, jar and went away to the town. And she began telling the people, come see a man who has told me everything that I ever did. Can this be, is not this the Christ? Must not this be the Messiah, the anointed one? She forgot all about the jar. 
She forgot all about the reason why she had come to get water. She forgot about everything. She didn't know it wasn't anything that she needed from that water pot. It wasn't anything that she was thirsty for in the natural. All of a sudden, Jesus came in and turned her world right side up. And the scripture says, so the people left the town and set out to go to him. And so we see here that those who she was able to contact and make a mark in, they left where they were and they followed her. And that's because she was in the right place at the right time. She was at the right place at the well, conversations at the well, having a come to Jesus meeting where he meets her and he encounters her and he elevates her from being one who was in dead relationships to now being an evangelist, now being called on a mission. He gives her purpose. He gives her an assignment. He gives her a reason to use her voice. He gives her a reason to go out and to make a mark and to influence people. And as a result, others are changed and others are impacted by the grace and by the favor that was on her life. Look over at Luke 10, Luke's Gospel chapter 10, and you'll see a very similar situation, one that we've looked at in times past, but in light of what we're looking at today, I know we're going through several different scenarios, several different things, but I'm telling you, Jesus will meet you right where you are. His presence will find you and position you and elevate you and cause you to stand out and cause you to be elevated and preferred and to stand out. Now let's look at this this story here in Luke chapter 10. Let's look at verse 38. Luke chapter 10. Because We want to look at verse 38 through 42. I pray this is encouraging you today. Now it came to pass while they were on their way, it occurred that Jesus entered a certain village and a woman named Martha received and welcomed him into her house. And she had a sister named Mary who had uh, seated herself at the Lord's feet and was listening to his teaching. Now, you've got to understand just context and setting that Mary, ordinarily, women were not allowed to be in the company of men. Women would have to, most instances, be removed and be in a different room and were not allowed to be around men. But it was Jesus, as we just read, as we just saw, because of him being full of love, being full of favor, full of grace, full of truth, allowed Mary to be there so that she could learn, so that she could be educated, so she could be informed, and she could learn what the men were being taught. And she could sit there at Jesus' feet and hear every word that was coming out of his mouth. Because Jesus obviously didn't think that the words that he was speaking were for men only, but he allowed Mary to be in the midst, to be in his company, to sit there and hang on every single word. Mary was at the right place. On the other hand, Martha was in a different place, different mindset, a different goal, Her intention was different. 
to the point where she got agitated with Mary because Mary was in there with Jesus sitting at his feet. But Martha was in there being distracted and agitated, too busy not carving out what was necessary and most important at the time. And so it says, but Martha overly occupied, Martha too busy, was distracted, and she was distracted with much serving. She came up to him and said, Lord, is it nothing to you that my sister has left me to serve alone? Tell her then, Mary wanted Jesus to make Martha, make Mary, excuse me, Martha wanted Jesus to make Mary help her. He says, make her then help me. You, Jesus, if you tell Mary, she'll do it. Because in Martha's mind, Mary was doing the wrong thing at the wrong time. Martha wanted Mary to come in there with her and be distracted and busy and all the things that she was doing. She wanted her sister in there with her. But Martha, on the other hand, Mary, on the other hand, recognized, no, it's not the time for that. We have the Son of God, the Word. God made flesh, and it is time, the right time, for me to sit at his feet so I can hear his word. And so Martha said, make her, help her to lend a hand and to do her part along with me. But the Lord replied to her by saying, Martha, Martha, you're anxious, you're troubled about many things. There is need of only one or but a few things, and Mary has chosen the good portion. Mary has chosen the right thing to do, to be in the right place at the right time. Mary has chosen the good portion. Mary knew where she needed to be. Martha, on the other hand, she didn't know where she was supposed to be. And so it says, Mary has chosen the good portion, that which is to her advantage, which shall not be taken away from her. And when you are in the right place at the right time, you know what? You will have the advantage. You will be in the position where only God can begin to move, and you only have to give God the credit for what he wants to do in your life. I reminded several years ago, I used to go and to Tulsa, Oklahoma, and I would um, watch women's conferences on television of this one conference. Um, Lindsay Roberts, who's a friend of mine, and when we were living in our first home, I would all ways just kind of tune in to what was going on and just believe God that one day I'll be able to go to this women's conference in Tulsa and I'll be able to be there live in person. Bless God. And the things arranged and worked itself out and I was able to go. I was so excited about being there because I had watched it so many years on television and then all of a sudden I was there live in person. I was sitting way in the back, just so thankful that I could be in the midst and see it roll out and experience the anointing and the power of God. Then all of a sudden, years after years of just serving and tuning in, it's amazing how God allowed me to be a very speaker in that conference. And I'll never forget how I believe God to go to that meeting, and once I went to that meeting, I was just so humbled at his graciousness on my life, and then all of a sudden, by his grace and by his favor, 
God would even open doors and present opportunities to be a speaker and to be a part of that great conference from the past. And so I'm telling you today, there are so many things that God wants to do. God can cause opportunities to find you. He has unexpected blessings where you meet the right person or suddenly your health just begins to spring forth or suddenly he causes you to meet the right doctor. He causes someone to um, cause you to receive information on an invention or a concept where God shifts things around in your favor. What used to be a struggle is not a struggle anymore. And what should have taken years to happen happened in a fraction of a time. You may feel like you're stuck, that you could never accomplish the things that maybe you have dreamed about, the visions that you have had, that maybe you've missed too many opportunities, but I want to encourage you this morning that God is still good and that doors can open and doors will open that have not opened in the past. Those that were against you, how I many you know the favor of God will suddenly cause them to change their outlook? to change their attitude, to change their minds against you. We're talking about God. Well, he will do things and change the hearts of people and cause them to see you in a different light and to see you in a different way. And so that's what we're talking about this morning. We're talking about, are you at the right place? Are you believing God today because God has ordained it? Being at the right place at the right time is not limited to where you are physically. It's not limited to your physical position. You may say, well, Pastor Taffy, you know, we're in quarantine. I'm sheltering in place. But God's not limited by a pandemic. God's not limited by sheltering in place. All you want to do is shelter under the mighty hand of God. And then as a result of you being under his arm and abiding in his secret place, he'll do the rest. And he'll cause you to be a recipient of his favor and a recipient of his grace. He wants you to be at the right place at the right time to see his face, to hear his voice. Being at the right place at the right time, you are outside the ark of safety. Perhaps you're not at the right place that you would like to be, but you know what? God is not limited. God says, I'm ready. I'm taking the limits off of you. I'm enlarging the vision concerning you. And he will begin to cause a shift to cause you to move forward. So I encourage you today to check the doors that have been closed for you in the past. Things in the past that maybe were no's, I just believe that God will now allow you to experience the yeses. The dreams, the envisions that you had, the plans that you had to maybe start a business or to do a certain thing, to uh, go out in ministry or to go back to school, or maybe you had a, a vision to, to uh, meet a certain person or whatever it is. I'm telling you, don't give up. Things are shifting and doors are opening and God is breathing. And because of his breath, I'm telling you, things will begin to move. You'll go from the back to the front. Are you at a crossroad looking for direction on which path to take? God seeks to give you divine direction and guide you to his best for you in her life-changing series, Right Place, 
right time, Taffy Dollar takes us through the process of receiving direction from God and understanding how decisions give way to our ultimate destination. We have to make up in our minds when we're in the right place at the right time, the favor of God will show up and will show out in our lives and the glory of God will be revealed and cause us to be elevated and to experience His goodness on our lives. We got to stay positive. We've got to stay in faith. We've got to be steady. We got to be patient. We've got to be optimistic. Call or visit the website on your screen and get all four messages today for a love gift of $25 or more and rise above your circumstances. Creflo Dollar Global Missions has fed, clothed, housed, and shared the gospel of grace and the message of biblical equality with people on every continent. And so today, we just want to take a moment to encourage you to go and check out our website and catch up on all the great missions work that is going on around the world. You may never go to these places that we've gone to or witness the poverty firsthand that we've seen and been to the corners and places where all these things are taking place. But you know what? Your prayers and your financial support is enabling us to impact people in these very regions where you've never been. So on behalf of the seeds that you're sowing to enable us to minister to the needs of people, we want to say thank you for caring enough to proactively take the steps to prevent misfortune in the lives of others so that we can be a blessing, so that all families of the earth can be blessed. God bless you. Whether it's through our main campus or fellowship churches, our international offices or mission trips, every day Creflo Dollar Global Missions makes a mark that cannot be erased. To learn more about the work of Creflo Dollar Global Missions, log on to missions.creflodollarministries.org. Creflo and Taffy Dollar love connecting with you. And here at World Changers, we understand the importance of using technology to do just that. We're constantly working to bring the gospel of Christ to thousands of viewers and followers around the world. And we want you to get involved. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. We want to make the word of grace available throughout every voice of social media. Because of you, Creflo Dollar Ministries is providing a new understanding of grace and empowering change in the lives of millions of people every day. Thank you, partners and friends. Your love and financial support makes it possible to bring this message into millions of homes all across the globe.